Welcome to this short video on identities and access management in which we will be discussing OpenID and OAuth concept. We will discuss the use cases for OpenID OAuth. We will discuss the advantages that they have brought to the internet world and we will discuss the OAuth 2.0 workflow in detail with an example. So this will give you a simplified overview about these concepts and plus it will help you to understand the dance that happens behind the scenes when you are signing up to a website using your Gmail or Facebook ID. Before we go a little further, um, two words about the basics like what are identities and what is access management. So identities is uh, identities is, is constructed using the attributes such as email address, username, password, name, all these attributes, they go into constructing your digital identity and then you use this identity to uh, browse the internet world, to use the resources in the internet world. Um, within the organization, uh, your if, if you're working within the organization, then your identity is your Windows username and password that you use to log on to your laptop. Laptop is a resource. And similarly, you might be using other company applications. So you use your uh, email address and password there or your Windows ID and password there. Um, to access this these applications and resources so using these identities you will access these resources which are available for use for the user and these identities are managed by an identity provider so within the organization if i have to take an enterprise use case then mostly you will see active directory uh, will be installed within an organization which is acting as your identity provider because it is managing your identities and it is managing your access. So within Active Directory, within the database of the Active Directory, you will have the database for all the users who are using the resources of the organization. So there your uh, identity provider is Active Directory and your identity is your Windows username and password. Now, this is about the enterprise. When you come to the internet world, when you come to the internet, there, Nowadays, we see the identity providers as Google, Apple, Facebook. These guys are acting as the identity providers and they're managing your identities and they're managing your access as well to a lot of things over the internet. So with these identity providers in place, now when you set up a website or if there is a website provider, he wants to allow users to uh, use the services um, the resources that his website provides over the internet, then he can register his website with these identity providers. And then these identity providers then will allow the internet users over the internet to sign up to use their existing identities, that is their Facebook or Gmail or Apple ID to, um, you know, br browse these websites and use their services. So that's, that's the simplified overview. Now we will discuss the general concept of OAuth and OpenID in brief. So OAuth is an authorization standard. It is it, it allows a website to use something that you control on a different website. For example, you control your social profile on Facebook and you want to allow another site to use this. So uh, th this happens using OAuth. Another example would be if you sign up to LinkedIn using your Gmail ID. So here Google is your identity provider because you're using your Gmail ID. And now uh, LinkedIn will present you with a consent box, uh, which, which will say something like this, like, you know, do you want to share your name? Do you want to share your uh, email address uh, and your address book uh, access to LinkedIn? Uh, because then LinkedIn can suggest you these uh, suggestions where it can show you who all from your address, Gmail address book from your friends are already on LinkedIn and then you can connect with them. So in that way, then LinkedIn is asking uh, Gmail access to your Gmail address book. So this is happening using, so this authorization and access is happening using OAuth. OpenID Connect, it simply adds an authentication layer to the OAuth 2.0 protocol. And so the auth authentication is happening using OpenID, which precedes the authorization. 
So before authorization, there has to be authentication according to AAA principle. So authentication is happening using OpenID and authorization is happening using OAuth. And what are the advantages? So to, mm, to really uh, understand the advantages, let's uh, understand how the signup was working before on the internet when OAuth and these kind of identity providers were not present. So in those cases, how was the, the sign up working and how the internet was working? So before OpenID and OAuth, the internet signups would typically require users to create separate credentials for each website on which you're using some kind of resource or service. So imagine now that, that you have these 10 different websites where you want to sign up because you want to use some of their services and now there are no identity providers, there are no OAuth and picture. So in that case, you will suffer from password fatigue because on 10 different websites, you will have to remember 10 different passwords. Or if you use the same password on every website, then you end up creating a security risk for yourself because if one of the website gets compromised, the database for user credentials is leaked, then attackers can go ahead and use the same credentials everywhere else, same password everywhere else. Then um, there, is another, there was another security risk, like these third-party apps, you had to trust them to store your username and password, and you really didn't know wh what security, how serious security is for them. And then, so in that case, you are taking this risk, you are accepting this risk of trusting them. So all these issues, these two security issues and this password fatigue, all this was taken away by OAuth. So in OAuth, then the advantages, um, like you get the enhanced security, you are not sharing your username and password with every other website that you are using on over the internet. And plus the signup is really convenient and seamless. You don't have to fill up this big form for phone number, email address, address, name, language, preference. You don't have to do anything. So the old signup was you get this big form in which you fill out your name, you fill out your email address, your language preference, your phone number, all these kind of details you had to fill out. So the sign up process was not very convenient. So with OAuth now, this, this is very simple and, and very convenient and within a minute you, or even less than a minute, within seconds you get on your fingertips, you get the uh, sign up created on the website. Then there is uh, enhanced security, as I said, like you are not sharing a username and password. You don't take the. You don't have to worry about what security this website uses um, in their in the, in their backend. And even if they get compromised, your username and password is not leaked because your credentials are not actually shared by the identity provider. It just shares a token. And then there is revocation of access also, which is another important security feature. So here I've. I'm showing you a screenshot of uh, Gmail. So if you go to your Gmail and if you go to your manage Google account security, under that, if you, uh, you will find this, your connections to third party apps and services everywhere that you have signed up using your Gmail, those websites will be listed here. Those apps will be listed here. And then if someday you, you don't want to allow a particular website access to your information, you can simply revoke the access. So this revocation of access is now available to the user. So these are the advantages that OAuth and OpenID have brought in and they have made internet um, usage so much simple, convenient and seamless for the users. We will take an example of this signing up on animaker.com to understand the behind the scenes working of this OAuth 2.0 authorization code workflow. So imagine you are a user and you want to use this animaker.com. This is a website which uh, provides animation videos that you can use in your trainings and presentations and stuff like that. So imagine that you want to use some video on animaker.com in your presentation. Now, when you place a request from your browser to animaker.com, animaker.com asks you to sign up. When it is asking you to sign up, it will give you options do you want to use your Apple ID? Do you want to use your Facebook? Do you want to use your Gmail ID? Suppose if you choose Gmail, then you will get a pop-up like this, a window like this, 
which will include um, which Gmail account you want to use and plus it will include the authorization request as well wherein animaker.com will ask Google for your name, email address, language preference and profile picture to customize the experience for you. So imagine step one again, you click on sign up request and then animaker.com presents you with this pop-up, which account you want to use, you use Gmail. The moment you click on Gmail, you are redirected to accounts.google.com, this page. So now you are on the accounts.google.com page. You are not anymore on animaker.com. The animaker.com has redirected you to accounts.google.com and on this accounts.google.com now you will authenticate yourself. You will authenticate yourself plus you will give consent which means you will authorize uh, this request of animaker.com to use your name, email address, language preference, profile picture and it will all, this request will also include a callback URL so that when you successfully authenticate, then Google will generate an authorization code for your authorization request and it will share it directly with animaker.com. It will not share, uh, share it to you in your browser, it will share it directly to animaker.com. There was an old workflow called implicit authorization code flow where Google used to share or Google or, or say any other identity provider used to share the authorization code back to the user and then back the user used to share it to um, the animaker.com or the website in but that was less secure because in that then the authorization code flow is passing through the user's browser to animaker and, and it is bound to be tampered or uh, it can suffer with with client side attacks so that is the reason in this new workflow uh, so the old workflow is already de deprecated. It is not anymore present in OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow. So in this new authorization uh, 2.0 code flow, uh, when you are redirected to google.com and when you authenticate yourself there and when you give your consent there, then the authorization code Google will directly provide it to animaker.com using this callback URL which was present. So here is a little technical detail of what happens like if you check the OAuth uh, then it will include this callback URL function in which it will have the callback URL for animaker.com so taking our example you request for a sign up on animaker.com animaker.com then redirects you to accounts.google.com to allow you to use your gmail id now you are on the google.com page and here you are authenticating yourself and you are giving this consent. Now in this, you, you will the, there will also be a callback URL included. So Google will know to which URL it should send the authorization code for this request. So step one, you sign up. Step two, you are redirected to google.com. You authenticate, you provide your consent. All this information is shared with Google. Google generates authorization code in uh, step four, and then it shares this authorization code with animaker.com. Now animaker.com will share the authorization code plus the client ID and client secret to Google. Google will authenticate animaker.com with this client ID and client secret and the authorization code that it is giving it. And then it will generate an ID token for you and then give that ID token to animaker.com. Once animaker.com receives this ID token, it will create a sign up request for, for you and done. You are logged on animaker.com and now you can use their resources. One information about this client ID and client secret, you might wonder where this came from. So when you are in the process of, uh, you know, registering your website, on Google or Apple or Facebook, which are the identity providers. So when you're registering your website or application to these identity providers as OAuth 2.0 client, then these identity providers while registration will set up this client ID and client secret for you. So this is already 
um, this this has already happened before like when animaker.com was um, the website came live it must have gone to google and it must have said that um, i want users to use their gmail address on my website for sign up so please um, generate a client id for me please generate a client secret for me google registered animaker.com and then provided it with the client id and client secret so this is the this is the workflow uh, of uh, you know how the auth authentication and authorization happens using oauth 2.0 now you will wonder why uh, like why i don't see open id in the url in so whenever i am signing up i just see oauth 2 so some people have this question um, why you there is no mention of this open id the reason you might not see open id is because the open id is built on top of this oauth 2.0 framework to handle the authentication so when you sign up using your facebook or google the, the url will typically just show oauth 2 it will not show uh, you know open id here but in the back end the open id authentic open id is also used for authentication so these urls are part of the oauth2 workflow for obtaining access tokens and handling access requests uh, access to resources so but behind the scene when the website opens the open id connect for authentication it interacts with the identity provider using this oauth2.0 framework and that is the reason you don't see open id mentioned there so but but open id is in the picture as i was showing you this in the previous slide like here this is you are on the accounts.google.com page and when you click on your gmail it will ask you for your password uh, because you're signing up for the first time on animaker.com and then this authentication is handled by open id and then the second step is for authorization where below it is it is asking animaker.com is asking google for sharing your name email address language preference profile picture so this is an authorization request but this is this all this complete is included in the oauth 2.0 workflow or the the framework and that is the reason you just see oauth 2 here but uh, the open id is also in the picture revocation feature i've, I've already shown you this and uh, so th that's all in this video then i hope this has simplified um, OAuth and OpenID working for you and now you understand um, that while when you're signing up how the actual sign up request is working and uh, what happens behind the scene so all right then thank you so much for staying with me on this video I will see you in the next one